So the Rise 2025 team has just pushed a new build with a bunch of cool new features in it. Uh, they unleashed our GPU, which we'll talk about in another video. But one of the things that is kind of newer in version 6.6 .6 that I use all the time that I really wanted to see in 2025 is the ability to automatically download USGS DEMs. And the tool is actually snappier and I think more functional in 2025. So I'm going to show you how to use it. If you're wondering how to get this new update, just open 2025 and there will be a message there where you can just download the latest version. Okay, so let's start with a project that already exists. It's a reservoir, and I want to add DEMs upstream and downstream of it. I'll show you how to do this with this existing project that already has a projection, and then we'll build one from scratch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have my terrain right here, and I'm just going to right-click on my terrain, and we've got this new tool, Open USGS Importer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the USGS importer, and what you'll see is it'll kind of show you the map of the area that you're interested in. And you know, here's my reservoir DEM here, and so I'm going to query the area, and it's going to grind for a little bit, and then it's going to show me the data products that are available around here. And you'll see that there's actually several data products kind of in the canyons upstream of my reservoir, as well as a little bit downstream, and then you've got this kind of big meta product around there, but actually what I want are these little guys. And so what I could do is I could go in here and I could just say, you know, I want to download that. And it'll download and kind of show me what I got there. But there are actually a lot of these that I want. And so I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to press Shift. I'm just going to go get all those. And then I'll say Download Selected. And that'll take a little bit. But once they all import, you can see you know, we've brought them in. They're ready to go. So I'm going to go down here. And that's going to queue all of these up here. And so now if we zoom around you can see that we've added these DEMs and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my layers because I don't really love the extents of my colors and so I'm going to come here and you may have been a little bit frustrated with your ability to edit these in the past um, we can edit these now and so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose linear and that already gives me a new kind of set but I'm going to limit it you know I know that my minimum is 800 here and so then and I know my maximum is actually closer to 1800 here so that'll give me a better palette to work with and you can see that I've kind of imported these canyons upstream of my reservoir okay so now let's do it from scratch I'm gonna go back to projects and I'm going to create a new project and now I'm just gonna go from nothing and we'll call this demo USGS and then the thing that you really need is a projection, right? Because we actually need to know where to look in space and how to project these in space. So because you don't have a DEM, you're gonna have to get a projection from somewhere. So, you know, we're building some projection tools where you can go find one, but you know, I have a shape file here. And so remember uh, the PRJ file is the projection of your shape file. So we can just drag that in here and uh, we have a projection. So I'm gonna create. Okay, now we're just gonna add a terrain and we'll go in here, right click on it and open the USGS importer and it's going to open us to a map of the United States <clears throat> but you see it's kind of projected on the northwest because that's where our projection is from and so I did a little bit of recon and I found a region that has pretty good data and so if we come in here and we query on this alluvial valley here you can see that the data here are unusually good but I just kind of zoom in here and download this what you can see is this is actually bathymetric data which is very rare actually to find in a U the USGS database um, but I don't just want that because I actually want the floodplain as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift and I'm going to go here and I'm going to collect basically everything in this general region and so I'm going to get the bathymetric and the floodplain data and you can go in here and do some filtering. We're gonna add some filtering tools so you can kind of get the big ones out if you want. But for now, I'm just gonna download all of these. And you see it pulls in the bathymetric data first because it's smaller. And then it brings in the other data over top of it. And that's gonna be a problem because if you zoom in, you can see you know the, the bathymetric data was useful, but now when it pulls in the kind of regional data, the water surface fills in and so you don't actually get the bathymetry so we're going to need to switch that around um, but that's okay we can actually just pull all of these in and now that's all downloaded we get the import button here press import and 
it comes in. And if you don't see it, you can come here and you can say zoom to because that is often the case. And what you'll notice is, yeah, actually, uh, we don't see the bathymetric data. Um, and that's because if you look over here, the river ones are underneath some of the regional ones. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to reorder these, make sure that all the river ones are on top and all of the Western wildfire data sets are below. And so that will put the bathymetric data above the others. Okay, and then once I have all of the kind of bathymetric river data here above all of the regional data, I can go over here to layer and I can say reset symbology. And now what you'll see is that, you know, I've got all of my floodplains, I've got all of my regional data, and I've got the bathymetry. Now, a word of warning here is that there's very rarely bathymetry. And so in general, even if you pull these data in from the USGS, it almost always has that flat water surface and you're gonna have to burn in some sort of channel. But in this case, uh, we're actually ready to go. And so I think these tools are extremely helpful uh, to get your base data at various scales early on in your model. It's super convenient there in 2025 now. We're gonna keep updating them. The guys already made some updates today um, and those filters are gonna be really powerful. But for now, we just wanted to let you know they're in there and uh, we'll do another video soon on some of the other features.